Hey everybody, welcome back. Mr. G here again. This is uh, another lesson in the lecture series for the course Electric Machines, ELIC 200. Today we're going to be talking about a very unique type of motor, something that is referred to as a stepper motor. A stepper motor is very unique and is unlike anything that we have talked about so far. All of the other motors that we've talked about so far in this course are free running motors where you actually apply electricity to the motor and it rotates freely. A stepper motor is actually a motor that is very precisely controlled through different steps around the rotation. So instead of freely rotating around, it actually moves from one location, the rotor moves from one location to another, to another, to another, etc. in a very, very controlled fashion. So, stepper motors. Before we get into how a stepper motor works, there are five definitions that you're responsible for knowing. This sheet is in your class notes and it is entitled DC Stepping Motor Terminology. So the first one is what's referred to as the step angle. The step angle. The motor shaft rotates its specific angular increment each time the winding polarity is changed. This specific degree of rotation is called the step angle. So if I took an example like this where I have a rotor inside a stator and if I energize A this part is going to line up with A. If I de-energize A and energize B it will attract like this. So we've made a step from A to B. So how many degrees of rotation did the rotor go through? That's what's known as step angle. The next is steps per revolution. This term describes the total number of steps required for the output shaft to rotate 360 degrees or one complete rotation. So again, if I started at A and I made one step, two steps, three steps, four steps, five steps, six steps, how many steps to go around one time. So in this example, this is six steps per revolution. Next on the list is steps per second. The number of angular movements accomplished by the motor in one second of time. In a stepper motor, this term actually uh, replaces RPM for regular motors. So, how many steps does the motor go through in one second of time? So steps per second. So how fast can the motor actually spin? The next term is what's referred to as holding torque. With the rotor at a standstill and the pole is still energized. How much torque is required to break it free? So let's say I energize pole A and I have locked the rotor into this position. How much rotational force would it take to actually cause that to move? So that's what's called holding torque. This is locked into this, this 
pole here. So this becomes a magnet. This is attracted. The magnet is still turned on. It's still engaged. How much force would I have to put onto this rotor to actually overpower that magnetic field? That's what's called holding torque. The last one is residual torque. Residual torque is I energize this pole here, I attract the rotor to here, and then I turn this pole off. There's always going to be a small little bit of residual magnetic field. So now, how much force would I have to put in order to break away from this little bit of residual magnetic field? So again, holding torque is when this is on, how much force do I have to actually put in order to break the rotor away from the magnetic field? Residual torque is I now turn this off and there's a small bit of remaining magnetic field. How much rotational force do I have to put in order to break it away now? So obviously holding torque is going to be larger, residual torque is going to be less. So five terms that you need to be familiar with. Step angle, steps per revolution, steps per second, holding torque, and residual torque. Again, this set of terminology is in your class notes. So there are a few different types of stepper motors. We are going to look uh, first at a very simplified version. What we have is three poles. So when these poles are energized they become a magnet. And then we have a rotor that's made of soft iron material. So the rotor will be attracted to whichever pole is turned on. So let's say let's say I energize pole A. If I energize pole A, the rotor will line up with pole A. Then I de-energize A and energize B. What will happen is this magnetic field will attract the closest part of the rotor, which is here. So what happens is the rotor leaves the point A and rotates to point B. The way that this motor is laid out, each pole is 120 degrees apart. So therefore, the step angle from here to here is 60 degrees. So I have rotated 60 degrees when I made a step from A to B. Again, I energized A, then I de-energize that and energize B. The rotor will move. If I make another step, so I turn off B and I turn on C. The closest part of the rotor will then move to C. And I have made myself another 60 degree step. I continue A. Energize A, it attracts the closest part. Another 60 degree step. So if you notice, 
I started with the star up top. This little star is now at the bottom. I have rotated 60, 120, 180 degrees. I have made three steps. If I continue along and I say B, that's another 60 degrees. I say C, that's another 60 degree step. And then I go back to A, and that's another 60 degree step. So I have done 60 and another 60 and another 60. So every step I am moving 60 degrees. So my step angle for this example, so my step angle is 60 degrees. My steps per revolution, steps per revolution, I have one, two, three, four, five, six steps. So I have 360 degrees of rotation divided by my step angle, which is 60, which gives me six steps. So 360 degrees divided by my step angle gives me six steps. And you can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six steps to go around one complete time. So what we're doing is starting, the star is going to be at A. I'm going to go this way. Then to there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five. And six rotation, or six steps in one rotation. What about the direction? When I make the A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C stepping sequence, you will notice that in this setup, I am actually rotating counterclockwise. counterclockwise. If I wanted to go to clockwise, all I have to do is change my stepping sequence. So I'm going to start off at A. I want to go this direction now. So I go from A, C. B, A, C, B, etc., etc. Every step in this example is 60 degrees. So to change direction of a stepper motor, all you need to do is change the sequence. So here I went A, B, C. If I go A to C, then to B, I have changed direction. This will get me a clockwise rotation. Clockwise. One of the nice advantages of a stepper motor over the other types of motors is the control. I can control this motor's rotation to a 60 degree spot and I could spin the motor and I could stop it when I want. So all I have to do is say A, B, C, and the motor will go, if I started with A, 60, 60. So I start with A, I go to B, and then I go to C. If I stop my sequence and I keep C energized, the rotor will remain locked 
at that position. This motor has a stepper angle, step angle of 60 degrees. We can actually get the step angle of a stepper motor down to a fraction of a degree of rotation. So we can accurately control the exact rotation of a stepper motor to a fraction of a degree. Stepper motors are motors that are used in a lot of electronic type equipment. If you think of a uh, inkjet printer, there's a stepper motor that actually moves the page down. So in a stepper motor or in a printer, we have a page that comes down and it prints a line and then moves the page, prints a line, moves a page, prints a line, moves a page, prints a line, moves a page. The motor that controls the page movement is a stepper motor because we can accurately control its rotation. All right, so let's do an example with this motor that we have. So let's say that I'm starting from position A and I'm going to go through the following rotations, 180 degrees of clockwise, then 300 degrees of counterclockwise, then 60 degrees of clockwise, and then a 180 degrees of counterclockwise. So, the question would be, what would my stepping sequence be, starting at point A, to actually go through all of this rotational movement? So, we're going to start with the first one, which is 180 degrees of clockwise rotation. So clockwise is this way. So that means that in order to switch and to control the motor for 180 degrees of clockwise rotation, I have to go from A, my first step is going to be here to C. Then I'm going to go to B, and then back to A. So each one of those steps is 60 degrees. Now I'm in this position. I'm going to go 300 degrees counterclockwise. So from this position, I go back to B. Then I go to C, and then to A, keeping in mind that each step is 60 degrees. So there's 60, 120, 180, then I go to B, 240, and then I go to C. 300. Now from this point, I'm going clockwise 60 degrees. So from here at C, I'm going to go clockwise to B. And then from this location, I'm going to go 180 degrees counterclockwise. So I'm going to go back this way, C. A, B. So, I have 60, 120, 180. So, up to that point there, that is my 180 degrees of clockwise, that point. Then, from that point, I'm going 300 degrees counterclockwise. 60, 120, 
180, 240, 300. So here is my rotation to go 300 counterclockwise. Then I'm going 60 clockwise. So this is the one step I need to go 60 clockwise and then 180 counterclockwise. So I got 60, 120, 180. So, notice three steps make 180, five steps make 300, one step makes 60, and three steps makes 180. So you have to know how many steps and in which direction. So in this example, notice I go A, C, B, A for counterclockwise direction. Again, so at this point, so for clockwise direction, A, C, B, A, clockwise, counterclockwise, it's A, B, C, A, B, C. So notice when I'm changing directions at this point, I am reversing my direction. So every time I reverse the direction, I go, so in this case I'm going A to C to B to A, then back to B, then to C, then to A, then to B, then to C, then, to C, then back to B, then back to C, A, and B. So, in order for this example, this motor to achieve this complex rotation, this is the switching sequence I need to go through. Another style of stepper motor looks like this. This one's got four poles as opposed to three and each pole is 90 degrees away from each other. And the way this one is labeled is this is one and this is two and we have three and four. So similar to the other design, when a pole is energized, it becomes a magnet. And it will attract my rotor. Now in this example, it's very common to actually have a rotor that is made of a permanent magnet. So these poles here are wound so they become south poles and it will attract the north pole of my magnet. So this would be known as a permanent magnet type of stepper motor. So very similar to the design before we can have rotation based on where the magnetic field is. Now, normally the control of this is slightly different than the other one.
There are two types of operation of this particular motor. There's what's known as the full step operation, and then there's half step operation. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at full step operation first. So we have one, two, three, and four. Those are the numbers on the poles. Let's say we wanted to control these things. So we can put switches here on each one and manually control them. Or we could put electronic switches, so transistors. And a transistor can control when each pole is turned on. That will allow you to do things like microprocessor control of a stepper motor. So instead of manually flipping a switch when you want to engage a pole, you put transistors and then you can have a control system, so like a microcontroller with four outputs. And the microprocessor can actually control which of these poles is energized at any given time. So, if we put transistors controlling these, We'll say that transistor Q1, transistor Q2, Q3, and Q4. So basically, turning on a transistor would actually energize that coil. Turning on a transistor will energize that coil, another one, and so forth. So what that might look like is this. So a transistor control circuit, if I looked at this coil here, creating this pole, there's a wire coming in, and then the other side of that is going off to ground. Same thing on this one, same thing on this one, same thing on this one. So if I wanted to control this with a transistor, here's what I would do. So I would have my voltage DC coming in. This would be the coil. So, I put voltage into the coil. From this other side of the coil, I would go into my transistor. And my ground would become here. And then this would be my control. So I would have some kind of a microcontroller. feeding signals to this transistor. When this transistor is turned on, current is allowed to flow through the coil. I would also need to have, for protection, a reversed bias diode across the coil it's just standard practice so that we are actually taking this magnetic field that is created and when it collapses and causes a spike, that spike has somewhere to go. Otherwise, the spike will destroy the transistor. So we'll say that this is Q1. So basically that's what we're looking at. 
Electricity is going to come into Q1, or into the coil, sorry, into the coil, and it's being controlled by a transistor. So that is a very, very common system. So, just for fun, we will call this Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. All right, first we're going to look at what's known as full step operation. So for this particular motor, when one of the poles are energized, it's going to make a south pole and attract the north pole of our magnet. So for our first step, Q1 is going to be turned on, therefore a south. Q2 will be off. Q3 will be on, therefore a south. Q4 is off. So what that does is it creates a magnetic field here, a large magnetic field. And what happens is the magnet on the rotor settles in between. So that would be our starting position for the sequence. The next Q1 remains on, Q2 is off, Q3 is off, Q4 is on. So now the magnetic field is here. So our rotor moves to that magnetic field. So starting from here one step would be 90 degrees. The next in the sequence, Q1 is now off, Q2 is now on, Q3 is off, and Q4 is on. So now the magnetic field is down in this area and it attracts the magnet, or right there on the rotor. The next step, Q1 is off, Q2 is on, Q3 is on, and Q4 is off. So now our magnetic field is in this quadrant and our rotor's magnet sets itself up in the middle. So each step so far, we have done 90 degrees. So the step angle in this particular motor is 90 degrees. If we continue, we go back to the original sequence where Q1 is on, Q2 is off, Q3 is on, and Q4 is off. So big magnetic field created here again and the magnet on our rotor settles in between. So that is one complete rotation. So steps per rotation of this motor, four. Step angle, 90 degrees. So that's what we call full step operation. There is another sequence called half step operation. And it looks like this. In half-step operation, we'll start with Q1 on, Q2 off, Q3 on, and Q4 off. So again, magnetic field is created here, and our rotor's magnet will set right in the middle. So we're going to start in the same position as we did before. For our next step, Q1 is on but the rest of them are turned off. So our rotor spins to this point. In the next step, Q1 is on, Q2 
Q2 is off, Q3 is off, but Q4 is on. Creating that magnetic field and the rotor settles in the middle. For the next step, Q1 is now off, Q2 is off, Q3 is off, Q4 is on. The next step, 4 remains on, 2 is turned on, our magnetic field is generated here, and the rotor moves. So now you're going to see that the rotor is moving at a 45 degree every step. So 45 degrees as the step angle for the same motor but in half step operation. So whereas before we had 90 degrees per step now we have been able to drop that down to 45 degrees per step. In full step operation we have four steps per revolution. In half step operation we have eight steps per revolution. So if we followed this all the way around you would see that we're moving by 45 degrees each time until we get back up to our original spot. Same motor, just a different style of operation going from what's known as full step to half step operation 90 degrees per step 45 degrees per step same motor just a different operation So we've looked at a couple of main types of stepper motors. We looked at one where we have just a soft iron soft iron rotor. Each of these steps was 60 degrees. We then took that soft iron rotor and turned it into a permanent magnet, put it into a different stator, one where the poles are now 90 degrees apart, and we have full step and half step operation. Again, a big advantage of the stepper motor is being able to control the rotation of the motor to an exacting degree. So you can rotate this motor 90 degrees and stop it. Another great advantage when you're using the electronic control, so transistors and FETs to control when these poles are activated you can then actually run the whole motor using a microcontroller and you can actually control it to a specific degree you can control the revolutions you can control the direction all by controlling the stepping sequence. Now the way we looked at this motor is we looked at it as very very distinct steps but 
if you speed up the sweet the sequence of the steps this turns into a very smooth type of rotation so the faster you go through the steps the faster the rotation therefore the smoother the motor becomes so that is the stepper motor I hope this helps everybody stay safe until next time take care